And this is our intro. It's lots of fun. Here we go. We're going to take you back in time. We're going to hypnotize you. We're going to bring you back to the 90s and the 2000s. All right. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome, and welcome back to Dixon Politics. This is episode eight. I am Samantha. I'm Adriana. And guess who's back? Hannah! (laughs) Yay! We are so happy to have you back. You've been very busy moving, and now you're going to be moving again, but that's okay, because you're here. You're queer. No, you're not, but whatever. Actually, speaking of queer, there is someone queer in the room. (laughs) Please join me in welcoming my very good friend and our very first celebrity guest host, Darren Carr. Yeah. Now, if you I'm not a celebrity. Well, but thank you. You're not a celebrity to me. In your heart, I am, Sam. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, Darren, if you guys are silly and you do not know who she is, she is Andy Cohen's assistant. She has her own podcast called Martinis and Murder that she hosts with John Thrasher, and um, that is produced by Oxygen. And you've been doing a lot. You had your Auto Trader commercial this year. Yeah, I've had like, three Auto Trader commercials geez. come out in the past year, and they've been really fun to do. It's like really weird seeing you in like a national commercial with your boss, like right. playing yourself, because cool, <laughs> I don't know how to act, so... Thank God I didn't have to do that. So, are you doing something for Amazon or am I hallucinating? I did a few videos for Amazon during their, like, holiday sales. Like, I would go on and I'd basically... They were trying to do, like, a modern QVC. So, they were trying to do it, like, hip and funny. So, I used to go on and kind of, like, hawk these products just for a few videos over Mm -hmm. in uh, November. Cool. Yeah. Nice. Well, we're very excited to have you here. And thank Thank you you for your time. Darren and I met um, five years ago. Uh, through my old job and I really really wanted to be friends with her because it's not often that I find women that I want to befriend yeah of course now that I live in New York I'm realizing that's not the case I can be with any woman any woman here I can be friends with them outside of New York eh, not so much but I didn't really know like how to ask Darren if she wanted to be friends with me so I was like maybe I should ask her out for a cheeseburger and then I'm like oh god she's gonna think I'm asking her out on a date but, you know, I mustered up the courage. I did it. You did. We you didn't put out, which was kind of unfortunate, but that's fine. <laughs> I got a burger out of it. There you go. And some fries. Just, so. just, to, <laughs> just to quelch all the, uh, the, the weird things. Just because I'm a lesbian doesn't mean that every woman that asks me out I assume is a lesbian. Okay. I, assume, I actually mostly assume they just want to be friends with me. I never know okay. if people are hitting on me. So you're lucky I'm oblivious. Yeah. Okay, fine. <laughs> there you, you go. Know, I've been in a lot of situations where I start jobs, right? And uh, a few months go by, and everyone starts to get comfortable, and then people are like, God, when I first met you, I thought you were a lesbian. I'm like, what? Why? They're like, <laughs> because you have broad shoulders and a deep voice. Oh, that's sweet. <laughs> really like, nice. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks so much. That's nice. But, all right, so we are going to do a little bit of a different podcast than what we typically do. It's going to be a little bit of a 90s, early 2000s throwback because I feel like 2018 was kind of just a mess Mm -hmm. (laughs) like it was a mess in the world it was a mess and people are really really yearning right now for nostalgia they're yearning for the good old days more so than we do typically but of course before we get into that we do need to go into our political segment what's burning so stay tuned let's get into it this I can't even say this week. It's been, what, two and a half weeks since the government shut down? Mm-hmm. I think we're going on, like, like, 12 days yeah. or 13 <sighs> days or something, maybe two weeks. So then yes. How much do you really notice? Well, we don't notice in our lives, but I notice because I'm constantly hearing about it. And then, Hannah, you sent that article about how this shutdown is going to affect our tax returns because yeah. if... You know, IRS isn't working, then they're not there to do our tax returns. I was really looking forward to that thirty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> good, I don't have to pay the government eight million dollars this year. This is good for me. I don't care if they're shut down for that reason. But Trump yesterday, and I didn't. I have the exact quote somewhere, but he basically was like, "Look, I don't care if the government is shut down for a month or a year. I just want my money to build my wall." Thoughts. <laughs> I mean, the, the the House isn't going to put forward a bill that they're going to fund the wall with. So basically what's going to probably happen, and it could take a few weeks, so there'll be a partial shutdown. I could see 
the House coming together and then Trump reframing it like mm-hmm. he won on their side. But it's basically just building up their military maybe on the border. There's no way they're going to get a border wall right. through. There's just no way. I mean, not only is it stupid, but it's there's no way they're going to approve $5 billion. Add a couple more zeros to that. Maybe we could build a wall. Um, <laughs> but that's stupid. It's not really what America's based on. So I could see it just being uh, he's going to get so much pressure from the outside that he'll spin it as a win for yeah, his side. Of course. Yeah, but yeah. what's the status on his presidency right now? Isn't he like thinking about stepping down or he's getting people? What's going well, on? Then didn't no. you, Hannah, again, Hannah's been on fire this week. Yeah. <laughs> Hannah has gotten a new lease on mm-hmm. life recently for a few reasons. And so she has been just, first of all, Thank you for all the work you've been doing on our Instagram account. We have more followers and more views on stories than we've ever had in our entire eight-episode history. Yeah, baby. So you have just been, your thumbs have been very busy. Your emojis out of control. (laughs) I do what I can. (laughs) Gotta love that eggplant emoji. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Serving you guys well. Yeah, well, you know, that was when we first started. We didn't have a designer, so I'm like, well, here's this. Yeah. (laughs) And now it sticks with us. But you sent us that article about how he was, wasn't Trump's, or wasn't there like a rumor that a journalist said like, maybe Trump will step down in exchange for immunity for his whole family? Did right. I read that correctly? Yeah, that was what it was. It was that he wouldn't run for another term um, if huh. they wouldn't press charges. Huh. <laughs> Please. Who knows? Who knows? Please. Right. Uh, when you're an insecure narcissist, there's no stepping down even for oh your family. Oh, God. Well, I mean, I, and then this morning I woke up, I was listening to NPR because I'm a hundred years old and like a bunch of TSA people are calling mm-hmm. out sick. I read that too. And you have to get on an airplane. Great. I know. I was like, great. This always happens when I have to travel. <laughs> well, they're not getting paid, right? So they're yeah, like, exactly. they're to work. Yeah, yeah exactly. I mean, exactly. the only good thing, like I was talking to someone about this, I guess the only good, and there is no good thing, but the only sort of nice thing about the timing was it didn't affect everyone like being able to get Christmas and holiday gifts, which was sort of nice, but now they're feeling it after the holidays are over. Now they're not getting paid. So Mm. there's that, but Oh, what a mess. (laughs) What a freaking mess. I also want to, and this is not really part of what's burning, but I, I would like to add, um, as of last night, we, we Dixon politics was officially picked up by Google podcasts, Spotify breaker, um, Striker and there's one more Radio Public, I think. Is that it, the five? Yeah. So now we've got those five, and we're on iTunes and we're on Anchor FM. That's Ooh. awesome. What the hell is life? <laughs> like, because we have our great listeners and our hundred we followers. We do. So to all the people who this might be the first episode you're listening to. So for all of the new people that are being introduced to Dixon Politics. Welcome. You will find that we are unfiltered, but we bring fresh and digestible content to you every Wednesday on all of these different platforms. Uh, you can follow us on Instagram. We respond to every single person who messages and comments. Uh, did you guys see the person that commented last night? And all they said, and it was on the post with Dana in it, they were like, gay. And I wrote back, I'm like, we love the gays. <laughs> Wait, we, we got our first these. hater, too. We did. Oh, Darren, I don't <laughs> I know. I love that comment. This. That was great. Oh I think God. they called me like... <laughs> Nazi diarrhea or something, which was pretty great. I was like, dude, that's so accurate. I want to put that like on my Spot Instagram. On. Yeah, actually, like, I we had that three on my- haters. We had the Nazi diarrhea. And then what else did they say? Like weed, like chemical and weed. Oh, like, yeah, yeah which is right. awesome because like I'm a Jewish stoner. So all of those like, things are just like hitting me in every way. Yeah. Murder, not, you know, all these words. Nailed it. I- <laughs> yeah, seriously. Yeah, we've made it now. Yeah, yeah my and God, then there was swipe the- right on me. <laughs> right. And then there was that other guy that was like, Oh, more like me running to, to block this account. Oh, because we, we had an ad, and yeah. he was mad about it. And I was just like, cool. <laughs> Let Thanks. me know how it works out for you. I wonder, like, the, or no, it says, like, this must be what the Kardashians feel like. And then he deleted his comment and blocked us. I'm like, wow, not only did we get our first hitter, but we got our first block. It's the dick impact. You know what you're, you're supposed to say to those people? You just go, I don't think about you at all. Right. And it's like the most insulting thing because all they want is for you to like respond to them and yeah. feel like you're really thinking about them mm-hmm. like trolls and be like, I don't even think about you at all. Yeah. Like you're so nothing to me. Not a damn thing. Yeah. But all right. So as promised, we want to go walk down memory lane. I don't even know what to call this segment. I guess we're just going to have to call it throwback. We'll put some, put one of my songs that I wrote because I'm Steve Aoki. 
<laughs> from Pretty much. one of my songs that I wrote in over this. So let's take it back. Let's talk about what the hell were we wearing? How did we do our hair and makeup? What were we listening to? What were we watching? What games were we playing? Let's go through all of it. 90s and 2000s, come with us on this journey. The 90s. I mean, honestly, and I think I've said this, I don't know if I said it on the podcast, but I know I've said it to both of you and probably to you, Darren, at some point. That's like the last time I remember being happy. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Was me. it in the 90s? Yes. Like, I'm happy now. I shouldn't make it sound like that, but I, the last time I can remember just being like carefree. I was going to say like, carefree. Well, point. we were like 10. No, I know. Yeah, we had no we like, bills. Yeah, there was no responsibility. <laughs> we were in fifth grade. We actually went like, to the park. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. I mean, so, when the 90s ended, I was 12. <laughs> true. So was I. Well, you and I are the same age, aren't we? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And you and I, Hannah, are the same age. Mm-hmm. It's weird for me to be, like, friends with people that are my age. I'm usually friends with people that are either, like, 11 years younger than me or, like, women that are, like, 70 so years so old. older than So I'm the only one yeah. born in guessing ages. Terrible. I'm the only one born in the 90s. Though. Okay. Because oh, I was born in 1990. Oh. Spot on. Jeez Louise. Oh, man. Can we even talk to you now? Like, you're not even 30? Oh, like, oh, ugh. Come on. <laughs> so I want to go through. I can just remember, like... My fashion. <laughs> I don't even know where to start. But Hannah, I remember your style. Oh, good. Like, <laughs> it was so just a fusion between Limited 2 and Gap. <laughs> and you were about it. And you always had. I mean, Hannah, okay, so for those of you like who don't know Hannah, she was like the coolest girl in school. All the way through, like, elementary, junior high, like, high school. No, you were. Can you just, like, follow me around and tell me how cool <laughs> yeah, I am? Right? I, I will. I well, don't remember being Use it as your ringtone. Yeah. Oh, my God. That's the coolest recorder girl voice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The coolest girl. I'll be like, oh, excuse me, have a call. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hannah was the coolest girl in school. You were always, and I don't know, like... And I was, like, the least cool person. So I always sort of had this... You were sort of this bizarre, like, anathema to me. And I just remember always wondering, like, how does she get her fashion? Like, how does she always know, like, what to wear and all that stuff? I mean, do you remember, like... Because it... How did you... Did your mom shop for you? Or was Deb just like, get whatever you want? Because I know your mom has always encouraged you to just, like, be loud and proud and be who you are. But, like... So... Do you remember in, like, third grade when I used to wear, like, those... <laughs> Stop. <laughs> All right. I remember there those, were a lot like, of, like, silk Yeah, no, like, it was, like, jackets. leggings. No, no silk jackets. You like, had a silk Leggings jacket. with, like, um... Then they'd have, like, these matching, like, tops. Oh, yeah. It'd be, like, a sweater, or, like, an with oversized the shirt. Or, yeah, like, a flowy, like, mm-hmm. empire waisted. I don't know. Whatever. Mm-hmm. So, um, that's what my mom used to buy when she shot for me and then I think I might have been a little traumatized by that and the bangs I had you for did. my entire life so eventually she let me shop on my own and yes that is when I found the limited two mm-hmm. and I liked to um, mix and match patterns yeah it was like cool you know like yeah, do, like, yeah. little Hannah was very fashion floral. forward I had bangs my entire life up until high school. Did Wait, your mom stop. used to put the like scotch tape across them and cut them? Because <gasps> my mom did, which was oh. dope as hell. My, I still mom, wish I could do that. My mom used a bowl. Okay, so uh, bowl, like okay, so <laughs> there's there's you told me that same yeah. thing. Like scotch tape right across. She's just like even line. Bowl ready to go. Oh yeah, and I had thick hair, so it was it was uh, a style. I to this day will not get a bang because of that like, because like I'm, I'm growing my bangs right now I'm like mm. god you had bangs for I totally forgot Forever, about your bangs yeah. and your hair is like stick straight but oh, they were it yeah. was so chic though it was so and I just remember because she was the <laughs> she was the coolest girl in school that's why I just remember this I, one I was time the coolest girl. I had these <laughs> What else back in the nineties, that was good. <laughs> what else makes Hannah so cool? Okay, so I will never forget this one time, Hannah. I think we were in maybe fifth grade, fourth or fifth grade, and I was. We were out on the playground, and I was sitting on the wall alone because again, I had no friends. And I saw you like walking across the playground. You had on these. Jelly, the jelly shoes, 
You then had on like a jean skirt. This is Haunted Sam for like 40 you years. You were <laughs> wearing like a silk satin. It was like a varsity jacket, but it was like silk or satin and it was light pink. And your mother had allowed you to put fake nails on. And you oh were like full on like Latrice Royale from Drag Race. Hands out in front of you with fingernails pointed down and you were walking across the playground while 10 other girls followed you. And I just remember sitting there by myself watching this happen and I'm like, one day, one day I'm gonna be that girl. Well, what did you used to wear? (laughs) What did you used to wear? Oh, well, (laughs) I was fairly certain I was a boy. (laughs) And I used to wear just like long soccer shorts with like wait in fairness to you basketball top that was cool in school like i remember in fourth grade i went through a really big phase of like sweat like sporty spice sweatpants like so all of you guys were lesbians back then (laughs) (laughs) pretty much cool i just i'll never forget it and i wore i remember i had this one shirt that was a white uh adidas shirt and it had Mia Ham's number on the back. Which Nine. Think, yep. And then it just said, like, Ham on the back. And then on the front, it just had the little, like, Adidas logo. And I just thought Can that I was... Can you that back, please? Because I was probably... Was it white? It was white. Yeah, I think I had the same one. Really? I, yeah. Did you get it at TJ Maxx? Um, <laughs> probably. I mean, my mom uh, shot for me because I had no money because I was 12 yeah. when the 90s ended. Uh, but I wore all my brother's clothes. Oh, there you go. Yeah, I just wore my. I was Perfect. a tomboy up until I was about, I don't know, fifteen. Maybe. I think that was like the time because everyone yeah. dressed like yeah. pretty sporty and like mm-hmm. like you ever rewatch my so-called life? Yes, yes. like that. You know exactly. what I mean? Like that's the style. Like flannel around your hips. Yeah. And lots of layers and baggy clothing. Like that was super cool back then. I mean, I can't relate because in middle school I was very Lizzie McGuire, like platform, <gasps> like flip flops. Oh, crazy. So basically, what you wear now? Oh man. <laughs> well, okay. I actually don't. I don't wear color anymore. But I was very <laughs> bright at the time. But then I went into my so-called life phase in. Um, like the end, maybe like eighth grade. So that's like two thousands. Now we're getting into. I was yeah. goth as fuck, but yeah. But in the nineties, no. Colorful were you a hot underwear. topic kid? Like, is that where you I shot? I was a hot topic. Wait, kid. did you wear those pants that had like the harnesses on? Yeah. No, I did oh, not wear God. UFO pants. No, I did not. <laughs> I love that you know yeah. what they're called. Yeah, yeah, no, never, never caught dead in that. But yeah, I was like scared of goths when I was a kid. I was, but now I'm like kind of goth. Alone. Like I wear all black all the time. Like, I ate alone at lunch because people were scared of me. The oh, only kids sad. that would talk to me were the goth kids. I Shout out to my <laughs> friend Sarah J. Like, <laughs> I was the only goth kid. I, ha- I walked in there with like a Lincoln Park t-shirt like every day. Amazing. <laughs> yeah. That's like so cool now though. That's the thing. Like That's if you had saved all that shit. shit now, it would be you could so wear cool. It all. Yeah, yeah everyone's trying true. to dress like from the nineties now, at least in like Williamsburg, Brooklyn. Like, no, like, very grunge. Fanny packs. Like, yeah, very grunge. Like Do you remember like <sighs> I think it was that day that they that we all went up to the high school or the junior high school rather, and that that guy who his name he had these like these black like UFO pants, but they had like flames coming up from the oh bottom, my God, oh my and God. he had exactly a matching flame tank top. Do you remember? Yes, that, that was his look. Oh That's man, very WWF like wrestler. Oh my God, but like. I ate it up. I was I like, damn. I used to watch WWF wrestling. Oh, yeah. Nice. I've been to it. If you want, if we're going to go. Nice. Like, yeah, definitely. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I love it. So, going back to your bangs. Your bangs, right? Everyone's bangs. I don't bangs. know why. Everyone's, Everyone's bangs. bangs. <laughs> so, I grew my bangs out in third grade. My mom was like, let's just throw a headband on it and call it a day. <laughs> Good for her. But yeah. then... Yeah, grow it out when they're young. <laughs> but then Uh-oh. I made the decision to bring them back. Oh, it was a myself. rainy Saturday afternoon in February. And there was a Mary Kate and Ashley movie so marathon specific. on Fox no, I Family. Because I have the best memory. I forget nothing. I'm glad. Except the Wi Fi password, which literally <laughs> yeah. I asked you about 20 minutes ago. <laughs> um. So, I was watching this Mary Kate and Ashley movie marathon, and I thought, wow, if these gals can look so great with bangs, then so the fuck can I. I went upstairs, 
I went into the guest room no. where we had these like diesel ass like wrought iron scissors from that were like my great grandmother's from the like 1800s. The first scissors, yeah, exactly. yeah, the first ever pair ten of pounds of metal, yeah. yeah. And I just grabbed a chunk of my hair and I cut bangs for myself. And how'd that work out? Well, I mean, so I cut them, but then like. I didn't realize that you had to like bring your hair down in front of your forehead. I thought you could just grab a chunk and like cut them and they would be amazing. So not only did I cut them, but then like I just kept making them wider and wider. So I had a little boyfriend at the time and I remember calling him and being like, Mom, will you still love me even if I have bangs? And he's like, yeah. So I was... Afraid that my parents were going to scream at me, so I tied them back with barrettes. And then that Monday, I went into school with bangs. I remember I tried to wear a really cool outfit to, like, offset, like, how awful the bangs were. I had this, like, long sleeve red Adidas shirt and these bell bottoms. And I was just like, no, everything's going to be fine. And a puka shell necklace. I had a puka shell necklace. <laughs> I so did not And I walked in, and my little boyfriend looked at me and was like, mm and he dumped me that afternoon. <laughs> wow. So then, to make matters worse... That's a dick. Oh I, gosh. um, to make matters worse, I then had to get braces. How long did you have braces for? I only had braces for about two years. That was it. So it wasn't bad. so bad. But, you know, my mother was like, you're going to be a child model. I'm like, well, I don't think so. So we got them. Then, um... I decided, well, you know what, maybe my braces and my bangs would look so much better if I got a perm. Oh my gosh. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> Your thought process is way off. I this really, explains so much. I know. Yeah, why am I not surprised? Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> I know. I love how you're all sitting here just nodding like, yeah. Oh, no, I'm nodding because <laughs> I did basically the same thing. I had braces first, though. Yeah, you got did. them off in junior high, and then I'm pretty sure I was like, you know what would look great? A perm. A perm. A perm. I should get a perm. Yep. <laughs> and I tried to like wash it out that night and that made it worse. One thing I never did. Oh Thanks my gosh. Me. Then I got glasses. So I had bangs, braces, per a perm, and glasses. And the, the hairdresser was like, look, I have to perm your bangs. So they went from being like sort of kind of cute looking like Hannah bangs to like just frizzy, awful bangs. <laughs> like like this. A, like a wave. Yeah, it was bad. It's really bad. But listen, you know, then uh, I got to say, sophomore year in high school, I emerged like a little butterfly. Me too. Like that was the I was I a dime. I was so hot sophomore year in high school. I was, ugh. My hair was long and beautiful. I had no acne. My braces were gone. I didn't wear glasses. I'm like, fuck it, I'll just be blind. I didn't care. And I was really pretty and I was dating a really hot guy and I was, you know, I don't feel out, like I but... really blossomed until like my 20s. Like maybe 18. I'm not going to say anything because I think you blossomed when <laughs> we were like 10 and you've been fucking blossoming ever since, you asshole. Like You're, still You're still the coolest girl in school. You are still the coolest girl in school to right. me. But now... All those kids are dropouts and like, you know, degenerates, but you're still the coolest one. But for all the people who are like, ah, oh, geez, like you, maybe you don't feel so cool, whatever, let me just tell you that Dixon Politics is now officially under my production company where I have hired Hannah as talent. So now you might have been the coolest kid in school, but now I'm your CEO. So you can call me daddy. Oh. <laughs> so, so now that we've all squared away... Do you want to away, advice, Hannah? Don't call her daddy. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do it. That's, what, that's all I'm going to say. Yeah. So when we weren't rocking hideous bangs and hideous clothing, Adriana, what were you watching on TV? Oh, let's see. Full House, yes. Friends, what else? Yeah. Cartoons on Nickelodeon, so All Real mm -hmm. Monsters, Rugrats. Rugrats. Like, if you had to pick your top three, like, let's go, like, by network. Like, if you had to pick your top three favorite Nickelodeon shows, what would they be? Rugrats, All That, and The Amanda Show. Yes, oh, okay. Yeah, what about okay. you, Darren? Um... Mad TV wasn't on Nickelodeon, obviously, because Mad no. TV was too much. Uh, Rocco's Modern Life, Ren and Stimpy... And uh, Rugrats was pretty much up there. Mm -hmm. Rugrats was definitely up there. Everyone mm -hmm. loved Rugrats. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of different stuff. 
What about Doug? Did anyone? I love yes. Doug. Doug, Doug is definitely up there. I always like picture his closet with all the same outfits, mm-hmm. <laughs> the sweater vest yeah. and the khaki He's shorts. Like Michael. So basically, what Adriana's closet looks like now? Yeah, it's just all black. That's it. All the same and thing. And then my third one. I, don't know, I liked all that too. That was a good one. Nickelodeon was really good back in the day. You know what yeah. I loved was um, Legends of the Hidden <gasps> Temple. Oh, oh yes. man, what it came back? It did? Yeah, yeah it's Excuse on like you it's on me? another channel, like a Nickelodeon three, four, five channel, whatever how many channels they have. But what yeah, was that show uh, with the camp? They were Oh yeah, Salute Your Shorts. Was that, oh Salute Your Shorts. I watched yeah. Yeah. Was that, that too. Yeah. 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 Clarissa yes. explains it all. Ooh, yes. 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 You know, like yes. global yes. guts when you have to climb yes. that. Yes. Agro yes. Craig. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. I looked that up online to see if you could buy like the Agro Craig because you get it as a trophy at the end of it. There's tons of people selling that shit oh now, and it's like really cool. It's more like how green. much? Oh my god! Yeah, like fifty bucks. Like totally oh, not worth it. But <laughs> now it's a I piece know what of to nostalgia. Get you. Yeah, right. For I your birthday, piece when of Agro Craig. Oh no, your birthday's near mine. Okay. Give it over to Mo. Mo. Like that was like that whole <laughs> yes. thing. I love Nickelodeon. Back Nickelodeon in the day. was so great. Because it was for adults. Yes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like Rocco's and Run and Stimpy were adult shows. Yeah. They don't have that anymore. Like on the same cartoons. Now there's like no. Adult Swim and like adult cartoons, but. Nickelodeon's like for general children. Now. Right, they're just yeah. kid shows. Do you guys yeah. remember the night that Snick premiered? Oh yeah, Are You Afraid of the Dark? Oh, oh my yes. god. I wasn't allowed to dark. watch that. Really? Oh, it's yeah. for the crazy. I was scary. Scary. I was always scared of Are You Afraid of the Dark. But like, Nick at Night was always fun. I mean, oh. they used to play old Brady reruns Bunch, of I Love Lucy. Well, that was Lucy. on, um, what is it, Nick at Night. Mm-hmm. They did the Brady Bunch and all that stuff. Do you I know what's on Nick at Night now? What's on now? All of our shows. So like, yeah. Friends is on there. All that okay. stuff is on Nick at Night. <clears throat> I don't have cable. I need to get cable back. I just like stumbled upon it one day and I was like, I'm on Oh my god. Wonder Years was definitely one of my yeah, favorite shows in the 90s. Wonder Years. Seinfeld was definitely up there. I watched The Sopranos. My parents didn't have any like restrictions on what we could watch on TV. Mm-hmm. So I had HBO when I was a little kid. Like I remember watching, have you guys ever seen Oz? Mm-hmm. Okay, so like that broke Edie Falco, but it's really about prison. Like it's about like prison rape and that. I mean, I was watching that when I was eight years old. That was a Like, oh uh, yeah. <laughs> so many parents were like, no, no, no. My parents did not care at all. It's probably why I'm into TV now. But like I watched everything. I, watched, the I watched like Sex in the City and everything. Oh. Oh, yeah. yeah, I did that on the sneak. So I was. <laughs> Maybe that's why you knew all about silk varsity jackets and fake nails before that's why I she did, was the you bitch. That's cool. why you were cool. Right. That was why I was the coolest. Girl. Meanwhile, the only channel that like I could get, so I figured it out, but like basically, we had two TVs. We had one in the like formal living room, which is where my dad used to sit and scream at the television and watch the news. That had every channel on it. But my parents figured out how to block Nickelodeon and the Disney Channel on the TV in the kitchen. Remember how we used to have that little TV on the coffee table in the kitchen? So, you know, you're watching Sex in the City, and I'm watching, like, Arthur on PBS. So maybe that's why I wasn't cool, but now... Don't oh, sleep I on Wishbone and Arthur, dude. Oh, I love Wishbone. Oh, Wishbone. Yes. Wishbone. Don't yes. sleep on that. You wishbone. Oh, do you remember they had that game? I had the Wishbone, like, Odyssey game on CD-ROM. I brought it over to my friend's house, and, like, her brother was like, oh, let me see, and never gave it back. To this day, I'll never forget. I'm always like, Zach... Where's my Wishbound game? He's like, I don't know what you're talking about. I, I know that, he still has it. I, I think I remember that. Game. I remember everything. Yeah. It's so bad. It's Wait, but do you guys remember floppy disks? Yes. Of course. Yeah, I had all my games on floppy disks. I used to like yeah. Zoss and stuff like that. Like, that's how I used to play all those games. I used to put, yeah. like, my homework. I remember when I used to be able to type, like, my dad would have to type up, like, my paper. Because <laughs> I didn't learn. You know, you only start taking computer lessons when you were, like, in sixth, sixth grade, grade or yeah. something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and now I can just... It's crazy how yeah. things change. I remember having to take the floppy disk, pull the little metal piece over to the side, <laughs> blow on yes. it, and then try to stick it back in the computer and like hope the computer would and just it. smash. And I was like a Sega game. Yeah. I used to that with Sega games all the time. <laughs> It's crazy how we've seen the progression. Like we <sighs> have Walkman, Discman. You know, we have everything. Tapes. Now we have iPods. Now you don't even need an iPod. Do you remember Palm Pilots? Yeah. yeah, I had a Palm yeah. Pilot. Like that was a thing back then. Yeah. I'm yeah. trying to remember the name. It was a major cable company and I can't think of it. So when I was younger I did used to do like child modeling and shit and I remember I went out to audition for a TV commercial for a cable company and they stuck me in a room with like three other girls that sort of looked like me. We were all about the same age and they asked us in 20 years, so I would have been 28 and I was 8 at the time, so in 20 years, where do you think we'll be with technology? I'm like, I don't know. Like, I'm, how the hell? But there was some girl standing next to me who goes, 
I think that one day we are going to have little things that are like the size of a watch and it looks like a watch, but you'll be able to watch TV on your wrist. And I remember in the audition room, I was like, <laughs> that won't happen. I'm sitting here wearing an Apple Watch. Mm-hmm. Uh, she she predicted the future. She knew. Maybe she was an alien. I don't know. I just thought of I didn't get clips. the commercial. Do you remember hit clips? Yes. Mm-hmm. And do you remember when they started giving, not giving them away, but they included them in your cereal. Uh, Happy Meals and your cereal? Yeah. What are you, hit clips? Oh, my God. It was just a little teeny tiny, like a, like a USB. This big. It was like the size of like your nipple, and you stick it in what looks like a little Tamagotchi, with like, and you have your headphones connected and you to it. 30, 30 seconds, seconds of, of a, song. a song. One song. But it had all the pictures of like NSYNC, Britney yep. Spears. It would literally just be like, ba, 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 and then it would cut. And that, yeah. But, but you were like, damn. It. And you would play I it again and again and again. I don't remember. I don't remember. I remember Tamagotchis, but I don't yes. remember. I don't know. Uh, Tamagotchis, Nano Pets. Yeah. Uh, yep, I had both of those. Serbian and then you and I oh, found oh, a few years ago that there was the Tamagotchi app on the phone. That wasn't as much fun. No, and he was like, you need the little thing that poops. I don't understand what I did wrong. I left it alone for 30 minutes. And I, I came it. back to shit and death. <laughs> She's like, I don't know how I did this when I was ten, but yeah, oh my god, yeah, sucks. I remember. That teaches you about parenthood. Oh my god, the pressure is thirty real. minutes away from your baby, shit and death. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, segueing away from TVs, what were your favorite movies that came out? And then let's do nineties and then two thousand. Titanic. Duh. Oh, yeah, Titanic. Was good Will Hunting, Shawshank Redemption, anything that I would still watch today, like. Never been kissed. Never been kissed. Oh, God. But is that like, I always confuse like the 90s and the early 2000s. Like, I she's yeah, all I that and whatever. I love she's all that. Yeah. But are those 90s or 2000s? Because I'm not sure, too. Exactly. I, don't know. I would say any wishes. Britney Murphy movie I loved. Oh, Uptown Girls. Yeah. But that's Way tough. harsh side. Yeah. Oh, yeah. God. I remember when she died. I. Yeah, <laughs> So, okay, I love Free Willy. It's one of my favorite movies. I love Free Willy. And I had an assistant (laughs) a few years ago. (laughs) And... (laughs) Sam, it's helpful if you share the story with the rest of us. It must be really funny. So, I was in my office, and my assistant walks into the office, and he had on black dress pants with a white v-neck t-shirt and a white button-down shirt that he had left unbuttoned because he hadn't had a chance to, you know, (laughs) button it and tuck it in. And I look at him and I burst out laughing and I said, oh my god, you look like Michael Jackson in the opening scene of Free Willity. And he got so mad at me. And then he got Fired like thirty weeks later. That's because of that outfit. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. What? Why is that funny? Yeah, I have like it's no idea. Funny. It's not funny. Was it's Michael not... Jackson in Free Willy? Like yeah. no. Yeah. And he yeah, had a like, music video. Right? He, there was a music video. He looked like Free Willy. That's like, what I know. Like, like, where where did this going? Like, this was like the most offensive thing I've ever heard. Free Willy. Yeah. 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 Yeah
tornado, the dad was like, y'all, we need to go and check on Mr. Bilbo and make sure that he's okay because he lives in a cabin in the middle of the woods. So they went to the, the cottage and they opened the door and he was dead, but like he was sitting there like this. <laughs> upright, eyes wide open, but dead. And I've never been able to get that image out of my head. That was the what worst this movie, movie is this? <laughs> what are they talking about? <laughs> I know, we're all like, what? <laughs> we are all sitting and looking at Sam and I'm like, with some what? hair on our face. Yeah. We're like, what's wrong with It was a terrible movie. I'm glad you never heard of it. I'm glad that you guys No, now I want to like rent it It's or because whatever. you have different channels. Cause you <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I like, had to make two with what I got. <laughs> Do you guys remember that movie Deep Impact with Elijah Wood? Yeah, no, I like that so movie so a lot. So no, I was too busy watching Mr. Those, those were like those, yeah. those were like the movies that I always played on TV, like TNT and stuff like exactly. that. Exactly, yeah. that's what I loved. Yeah. Or, um, I love that. Movie. I loved I love School of shit. Rock. It was always on TV. School of Rock and like Legally Blonde and stuff like that. I've never seen Legally Blonde. Stop. What? Stop. I think I'm the only girl in the world who has never seen Legally Blonde. I well, mean, that's the end of this podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us. Darren, go fuck yourself. I mean, I think it's better I've never seen Legally Blonde as opposed to that Mr. Bilbo story <laughs> <laughs> just whole like. <laughs> or wait, did you ever see like Tuck Everlasting? Yes. <laughs> like, the yes. girl. Like, I, I remember Tuck Everlasting. Full I will say. the tree and you're like, oh my god, she's dead. But then she gets up. She's like, "Don't worry, I'm fine." <laughs> and she's not drunk, so I have no idea what's happening. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's Sam, did you eat my had... cookie? Yeah, no, like no, no, I did eat a lot. She, of... dr- she drank a lot. I drank coke. like a whole. And if you ask her number one boyfriend, <laughs> he will tell you I'm not, not to have, not to feed her caffeine. Oh. And she's not that. We made she's, that mistake. Yes, yeah, I'm sweating. I have like a sweat mustache. Okay, all right. So <laughs> moving on. When we were watching Talk Everlasting, Free Willy or Mister Bilbo, can we talk about hair and makeup? Claire's makeup. Yeah, I got Claire's, Claire's makeup. Glitter, mm-hmm. Please. I never wore makeup. I didn't wear makeup <laughs> until maybe high school. I was just a tomboy. I never really yeah. cared. I had the same hairstyle, same everything. I what never about temporary tattoos? Yeah, I think I had. Yeah, tattoos. I had a couple temporary tattoos. I mean, if I were going to buy makeup, it would be like mm-hmm. Claire's and shit like that. Something at the mall. Or yeah, like no, something I your mom gets. Like, you know, like, like, I wore Mandy's. Like, yeah, like yeah, that, yeah. yeah, exactly. But I never I never wore makeup. I don't even know who like taught me how to. I don't even wear a lot now, but I never. I don't even know who taught me. How to put on makeup. Have a really good highlight going on. Though. Thanks. I try to. I try to have a nice little glow, a healthy glow. Um, it's also the light that's blinding me. What's wrong, Sarah? Are you still on Mr. Bilbo? Like, I'm sorry. I'm trying not to laugh. I don't know what's so funny. Let it out. I don't know either. So when you share what's so funny. Well, I just remember, okay, so my mom's white, and I don't know if you guys know this, but I'm Asian, so my mom and I are not the same color, but that's the only makeup I had, so I wore, I wore a lot of blue eyeliner, oh blue, God, eyeshadow. blue eyeshadow, oh God. You didn't have blue eyeshadow, Actually, blue, yeah. yeah, blue eyeshadow. Blue was the thing to wear. Blue and silver were like... Oh, but yeah. That was in the early the 90s. That was you know who still pulls off like a really good blue eyeshadow? Yeah. And makes it look amazing? Sarah Jessica Parker. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. She's always in like a blue eyeshadow and she makes it look just so fucking classy. It makes everything look good though. I she know, but like. things that I'm like, mm, how? Blue? Like, blue seems so harsh now and I'm like, man. And no, she, she rocks just, it. Yeah, she rocks she it. So rocks you know it. her because yeah. she's one of Andy's best friends. Yeah. Spill the tea. What she, I mean, I've, I've met her. I'll share my experience, but you go first. She's the nicest person ever. She's super humble, super down to earth. I introduced my girlfriend to her at Andy's 50th birthday party this year, and she was just, like, so excited to meet her and remembered her name. And, you know, like, I went to go see her movie. She was asking my opinion about it. You know, mm-hmm. and she didn't have to do that. Like, people don't have to do that. But she was just really, really humble and very down to earth. I've yeah. nothing bad to say about SJP at all. So I almost blacked out because my one interaction with Sarah Jessica also happened at the same time as my one interaction with Blythe Danner because they were both in that show together over at the New York City Center. Yes. And they both, I mean, you know, it was a few hours until the show, so they were both in just, like, jeans and jackets, no makeup, and they came into my old job so they could just stand around and look at the flowers and 
whatever. And they were so sweet and they were lovely and complimentary. And they just like hung out for like 20 minutes or so and then went and got a coffee and went back to the show. I mean, yeah. She's just, like a New Yorker. Like she's just yeah. great. She's just cool all around. I really, really like Absolutely. her. She's one of like, my favorite people in Andy's world. Yeah. So Famous what's a, people. So <laughs> just because I need to give the people what they want. Andy and Anderson. Mm-hmm. <laughs> New Year's Eve. That's oh, so yeah. great. Just gold. First of all, glad we found the umbrella, but then they got it taken away from them. What yeah, the I still have PTSD about it. It's it's so much. I mean, it was hilarious, but I was working so much, and then like it was so impossible to find it. But their their broadcast was amazing. Like their chemistry is uh-huh. really good. It's all about the chemistry. <laughs> even what we were talking about before, like you can always tell when people were just hired to put, be put together no. as opposed to being actual friends. I mean. They make money off of it. essentially the tour that I go on every single year. I mean, we go, we've been on 47 cities already, uh, and you can really see the chemistry between them. It's like so nice. Andy just brings out the best in Anderson that you wouldn't mm-hmm. normally see, and Anderson can just give Andy so much shade. It's hilarious, especially if you know them. It's just like doubly yeah. funny. We were laughing, so Hannah and I were together in New England for New Year's Eve. We went out to dinner together. <laughs> nice yep and then we uh we went back and we we turned them on and it was so funny you know to watch sort of this very i I always think of anderson as being very buttoned up and extremely intelligent and articulate and thoughtful and it was so fun to see him with andy and just sort of just be like a a guy Mm -hmm. and hang out and kind of let his guard down a little bit and when he took that shot (laughs) yeah (laughs) The whole thing, it was just, yeah, it was amazing. So in your, in your time, um, who are some of just the nicest celebrities you've ever met slash interacted with? I mean, most people that I, I meet, you know, there is that like sheen that they're going to be nice to me because of my guys under Andy, you know, people are just going to automatically be nicer to me maybe than the, and then anyone else. Um, but I will say anyone in Andy's like close circle of friends are honestly amazing. And I think that's more of a testament to yeah. Andy and the type of people that he really attracts. Mm-hmm. And he's just like so Kelly. Yeah, Kelly's is sweetheart. wonderful. Like I love her. John Hickey is just the nicest, the guy. nicest guy ever. I John really like called Helen me to Barkin. send something not to Andy but to Waka one time. And I was laughing so hard because oh, he I'm wanted sure. to send like Waka like a beautiful orchid plant or something and it was so sweet yeah they're all just like such nice people and I mean I've been with them now for almost eight years so I have like really good relationships with all of them and I'm friends with all the assistants and we're all friends and it's just a really solid good group of people and Mm -hmm. the best part is is like Andy's like really really close friends aren't famous at all like that's his posse Mm -hmm. like his friends from when he was like in St. Louis and really really young he still keeps such personal contact with them I talk to them almost every single day and everyone's just really down to earth it's just like having like a bunch of adults and parents around you that you can go to for advice Mm -hmm. and they're really really welcoming to me all the time and I think what I noticed working with you because I worked with other celebrities and public figures but working with you it was so obvious to me how close you guys all are you're all sending each other gifts you're never forgetting a birthday you're never missing a birth of a child or a a death of a parent or whatever and I I always really admire that Um, yeah even when I was on the phone the other day with Andy and I was working and he was away I was like having my phone on speaker and at, at the end of it, my girlfriend was like, your relationship with Andy is, like, so sweet. And I was like, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's a testament to him. He's just, like, a good old Midwestern boy. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, he is. And, I, and I, do, I do think, and maybe SJP and other people are probably not part of this, but I do think that, especially nowadays, like, the moment that you get famous is the moment that you start growing as a person. And Andy didn't get famous until he was in his 40s. So he was well into his adulthood. I mean, he, like, had a really good sense of himself and really, really humble. Like, he'll eat steak and shake like the rest of us. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? He's not, he's not, he's not like, go get, do, go do this for me, Darren. Go do this. Like, he doesn't Mm -hmm. roll call. He doesn't do any of that. What is the hardest part of your job? Um, my hardest part of my job now is maintaining that job with all the other things I have going on because now I have like my own separate thing that I have to do and I get hired and booked to go places or, you know, I've got this podcast that I do, but Bravo hires me. I do videos for bustle. I got to go down to Miami for other things. So it's really hard maintaining like both because Andy's always going to be my number one priority, but 
um, you know, it's 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 like two having two full time jobs. Do you think you're going to grow out of that, or do you think you will always want to work with Andy? I mean, I think I'll always want to work. I'll always want to be around Andy, but I think anyone. I don't want to be Andy's assistant. I don't want to be under his guys forever. You know, yeah. you always want to be able to grow and you want to be able to learn. And I want to be my own thing and I want to be a game show host. And you can't. Yeah, you want to be able to move past that, but I will always be in Andy's orbit. You know, he's having a baby in a few weeks, and like I've been, I've been in that process now for about a year, mm-hmm. and like I already feel like a little aunt to that kid, even though he, even though he's not even born yet, and I'll always be a part of his life. Mm-hmm. I think he'll always be a part of my life. I always used to say like he'll be the one like officiating my wedding, mm-hmm. you know, and it's just really really nice. Wait, did Andy announce that it's a boy? Yeah. Oh, okay. He announced a news. Like, damn it! I want this to be an exclusive. No, he announced it. <laughs> damn it! I'm so happy for him. I think that that's just yeah. Wonderful. I'm excited for him. Awesome. Yeah, it's about time. Fifty year old man. He's he's gonna yeah. do it. I'm really excited yeah. for him. So I think in my experience working with celebrities and public figures, not only did I enjoy working with you, but I gotta tell you. Uh, Rihanna, her team, the entire hip hop community, probably some of the nicest yeah, they're sweet. and they're really, most really nice. professional people I've ever worked with. And especially for Rihanna, what I loved about her was not only was I sending things to other celebrities and whatnot, but I would send things to like doormen, janitors, like people like that, you know, anyone that would help her get into a building, you know, undetected or whatever. And I, I think that that says a lot about her, and and I loved working with her team. Um, You know that there's one celebrity that I work with that I did not like at all. Um, I didn't like the way, and she is, in our Yeah, she's a bitch. (laughs) Yeah, she Darren's a bitch. Yeah, she's so terrible. This one was not as bad as as you, but she almost. But it was just, you know, she's one of the hardest working women in Hollywood. She has like two TV shows. She has. I mean, an album, she's got everything. She is one of the most polarizing figures, but unfortunately, um, her team wanted everything for free, and they wanted it all last week. And it was just not, I I can't can't work like that. So, you know, um, but anyway, so we've gone through shows, movies, fashion. (laughs) We've gone through um, makeup and hair, snack foods, fruit surge. Gushers. Oh. Mm. Warheads. Surge. I have warheads in my purse, actually. I have mom. surge in my mom's fridge. Do you really? Yeah, some... This guy got it for me. I don't know. I feel like they would kill your insides. You know what I mean? Like, if you were <laughs> a guy, like... That's like, what like, he mountain. was trying to do. Yeah, he was trying mountain trying to kill me slowly from the inside. Ruining your sperm count, Hannah. Like, it's low <laughs> low motility <laughs> in there right now. <laughs> what did surge even taste like? Was it lemon lime? I don't drink it. I, I have no it. idea. Sitting there, I'll give it to you. Squirt, I think you're thinking of a lemon lime. I have yeah. no idea what surge tastes like. I surge don't makes, it, makes me think of Mountain Dew. I'm about to Google it. Yeah, it yeah. is kind of like Mountain Dew. Mountain Dew is a good I remember I used to get those, um, and they still make them, and when I'm having a bad day, I go right over to CVS and I buy a bag, those combos things, you know, where it's like a pretzel on the outside and cheese on the inside. Yeah, I love combos. I love combos. But yeah, I ate a lot of warheads to the point where, like, my tongue would peel. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. What about those, like, um, they weren't juice boxes, but they were, like, those plastic bottles that you'd... Like, oh, flick off the top what or whatever. Are those called? They're what? like Kool Aid, but they're not Kool Aid. You know what I mean? Yeah, what the hell they're at the bodega. <laughs> yeah, you can yeah. still buy them. Yeah, I haven't bought them in it with a juice. Off, like the wax top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. They were glass and you can like squeeze it in. It was like, squirt. I just never knew what it was they something were like called. that. Like, okay. Surge was made to compete with Pepsi's Mountain Dew. So okay. it was okay. a citrus flavored. Mm-hmm. Okay, so there you go. Nice. Let me see if I can find the name. What were those things called? I don't they were so. But they were blue and they were red. Yeah, I know that. And those were the only two colors. like the juice in it. It was, yeah, those were really, really good. But I remember going, bringing it back to Limited 2. I've got a funny Limited 2 story that I'll tell in a second. But do you guys remember the Spice Girls lollipops that they used to sell? Oh my They're God. probably yeah. got my Probably me too. Do you remember Whistle Pops? Yeah. Yes. I saw those in a candy store here um, called Economy Candy that sells all these like old 90s candies. Where and is it? Like fruit stripe gum and all of that. It's yeah. down on Rivington in Lower East Side. It's amazing. It's oh my got God, going. Wall to wall candy. It's an amazing place. I love it. What about uh, candy cigarettes? I loved those. Still, still have them. Yep. Yeah. Love those. But unfortunately, if you eat too many too fast, you get a weird aftertaste. So you kind of have to like control yourself. So here's my limited two story. Oy, oy, oy. All right. So at some point in elementary school, it came time for me to buy a bra. And when this first happened, my mom made a sorry really... Kool Aid bursts. Aha. Uh-huh. Oh. There you go. Oh, thank you. Okay. You're welcome. So, 
when I first like when it was when it came time for me to buy a bra my mom made such a big deal out of it she took me up to Nordstrom took me out to lunch and then was like okay now we're gonna go bra shopping so it was sort of this like whole experience so as like the year went on I'm like no I don't want to wear a little jockey sports bra anymore like I want a real bra I want one with like straps and the little hooks on the back I'm not playing around so my parents, even though they blocked all these TV channels for me, they were pretty trusting, so my mom would sort of let me loose in Limited 2, and she'd sort of go, you know, stand outside and do whatever. I really, really, I was in sixth grade, so I was 12. I wanted a black bra, and I realized that, like, no one was going to see it, like, Scandalous. but it was just, like, something, like, I just, I think I wanted to feel like a woman. I don't know, and I remember, like, my mom was like, oh, like, you only wear a black bra, like, it's only for women that are sexy, and I was like, I want to be sexy! Oh my gosh, my so, mom said that about black underwear, she's like, why do you have black underwear? Yeah! Uh, guys, like, that was from 10 Things I Hate About You. Is it? What? The black underwear. Yeah. 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 Well, my mom used to fucking yell at me about it. Don't so. you remember they, like, yeah. go into her room, and they, and, like, they hold up her underwear, and they're like, oh, she's, she's like, got black oh, underwear. Oh, yeah! Oh, this I is only like like even those upset. black bracelets meant that you were fucking too. She is jelly bracelets. Well, yeah, no, yeah, those jelly bracelets. <laughs> At twelve, I did not want anything because of sex. I just, I think I wanted to feel like a woman. I just like wanted to be basically like who I am right now, but like minus the like cellulite. <laughs> you want but, to feel like a woman? Get a beige bra. <laughs> there, there you go. Yeah. This is true. Actually, I'm wearing a. Yeah, I'm wearing a beige bra right now. But I'm anyways. wearing a beige bra too. So I don't need to wear a bra. Hannah is the only one wearing a black bra. Are you are you looking for sex? No, not today. <laughs> Maybe tomorrow. Yeah. So I'm at limited two, and I'm shuffling through the the bras, and I start out with the white ones, and then I sort of made my way over to the black, and I found one that was my size. It was like you know like a twenty six triple A, and I got it. And I went and I stood in line and I had like a couple of shirts like with me. So I was hiding the bra under the shirts. You know, my mom would sort of loop back around. Hey, Sammy, or whatever. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm in line. I'm fine. So my mom was sort of standing in the middle of the store by the time I got up to the register. And I will never forget the woman at the register. I handed her all my stuff, but my little bra, which was still on its hanger, got tangled in the shirts because I was just shuffling around. I was so nervous. So in order to break it free, she lifted the pile of clothing with my black bra up into the air, separated the shirts, and there in her right hand, she was holding my teeny tiny little black bra. My mother from across the store goes, up, 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 absolutely not. And she comes up, she's got her like L.L. Bean outfit on, and her little Vera Bradley purse, and she comes up and she's like, Absolutely not. Rips it out of the saleswoman's hands. She and she's lecturing me. Why do you want this? What do you need this for? You don't need a black bra. And it was right around the holidays, so the lines were really long, and everyone is looking at me. And I'm like, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. It's I'll just get a lollipop. So I got a handful of the Spice Girls lollipops. Didn't get my black bra. <laughs> um, you know, and I'll never. I will never it's forget. Just traumatized it. you from. Well, there was another embarrassing 90s story. Do you guys remember Riverdance? Yes. yes. So because the only channel I got was PBS, <laughs> that meant the only uh, thing I could watch was Wishbone. like, you know, Wishbone, <laughs> Arthur, <laughs> Murder, She Wrote, and, and, Riverdance. and Riverdance. So for, for Christmas, my parents got me tickets to go see Riverdance at a very big theater in New England, and I was all excited, but I used to get really, really, really car sick. Um... So as we were driving to this theater, which was a good hour and 20 minutes away, I decided I had on a little plaid skirt and um, I had on these like stockings that had um, like hearts all over them. I don't know. It was a look. Anyways, so I unclipped my skirt and uh, I fell asleep. Next thing I know, <laughs> my mom is shaking me and she's like, Sam, Sam, wake up. You got to get out. You're going to go stand in line with dad and I'm going to park the car. And I'm like, ho, ho. So I'm struggling with my seatbelt. I get it, you know, whatever. I open the door and I step out of the car and my dad just goes, ha, 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 ha. And he's pointing at me and I'm still half asleep, like stretching like, 
what's going on? And meanwhile, just to let you know, my mother had pulled up in front of the theater. So, like, everyone's walking into the, to the theater at this point. And I'm looking around, like, why is my dad laughing? And then I hear my mother cackling. So I'm looking at him. I look back at my mother, and I look down, and my skirt was down around my ankles. My little black tights with the hearts were just in full force. Uh, I don't know why, but I decided to wear my underpants on the outside of my tights that day. So my little Fruit of the Loom Beauty and the Beast underpants with tasteful glitter were all out. I jumped, tasteful glitter. I jumped back into the car, and I'm like, drive, drive, drive. And my mom was laughing so hard that she couldn't drive. And now we call it river pants <laughs> instead of river pants. Oh, that's pants. funny. That's something I get. Oh. <laughs> Fuck you, Darren. <laughs> Update. Mm-hmm. It's squeezits. Oh, Thank you. Geez. That's what they're called. Squeezits. Sorry. They're delicious. And they cost like 10 cents a piece, and it was amazing. Yeah. So, all right. This has been amazing. This was a good walk down memory lane. Thank you guys so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Do you guys remember Gak? Nickelodeon Gak? Of course. My brother threw it in my hair when I was a kid. I had to cut it out. Yeah, same here. My brother's like my best friend now, but he was an asshole back then. I got it in my hair. I then cut it out. My dad then got so mad at me that he took the Gak and like threw it into our bed. They also had that foam one. You know, Flom. Yeah, Flom. Flom. I love Flom. Flom Flom was cool. I I had a Stretch Armstrong. All those fun toys. Bop it. Yeah. Girl talk. Skip it. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I love skip yeah, it. Skip I need it. a skip it. Maybe that would help me lose weight. I'm going to go get a skip it. My downstairs neighbors are going to love me. Do but no, drive. this was yeah, amazing. Thank you so much for being here. My Dad. pleasure. Thanks Thank for having me. Joining us. I can't wait to come back. We Hopefully. usually, I want you to come back and I want you to come back for like a more structured episode because usually we do segments and it's yeah. like boom, 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 boom. But I just thought, let's just be girls. I'm <laughs> glad I got Hannah before she left. Yeah, no. Have a safe move. Thanks. I'll be back. I'll visit you. Yes, please do. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you all again for tuning in to Dicks and Politics. And to all of our new listeners, welcome. We're thrilled to have you here. You can follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all that good stuff. You can find us on billions of different platforms. We're just so happy that you're here. So, I'm Samantha. I'm Hannah. I'm Darren. And I'm Adriana. And you just listened to Dicks and Politics. Thank you for listening to Dicks and Politics. Digestible and unfiltered content about men, money, and moments. New episodes every Wednesday. Don't forget to subscribe.